the Bible is a book of miracles. We see numerous miracles that are recorded in the Bible from cover to cover. From Genesis to Revelation. We see varieties of miracles that are recorded right there. In fact, the very first book and the very first chapter of the Bible, it starts with miracles. And throughout the Bible, we see miracles of every kind. What kind of miracle do you want to see? Healing? The dead being raised? Financial breakthroughs? We see every kind of miracle that is recorded in the Bible. And what is the miracle that you are expecting in your life? It is going to fit into one of those categories that is already mentioned in the Bible. So that is good news for you. Your problem is not unique. And your problem is having a solution. And God is able to perform a miracle in your life and in your situation. And there is a solution for every kind of problem and every kind of situation that you are facing in your life. And why are these miracles recorded in the Bible? Are they recorded there so that you will have a good read? Or you will enjoy reading the story? No, they are not just stories. They are real incidents that have happened in the history of the world. Well, they are recorded there because, number one, so that you and I will know and understand how powerful our God is and who our God is. Now that we have read how God has split the Red Sea, you and I, we know that my God is able to split the seas. We know that my God and our God is able to silence the storm. That our God can raise the dead and give him the praises. Oh, those miracles are mentioned there so that we will know and understand who our God is and how powerful he is. And number two, the reason why those miracles are recorded in the Bible is so that we will be able to tap into that same miraculous power and personalize those miracles in our lives as well. Friend, when you read those miracles in the Bible, they are not dead stories. There is still life in the miracles that are recorded in the Bible. When you read them, oh, you are able to tap into the miracle working power of God. That red sea in your life gets split. That problem in your life is split apart and God makes a way for you. As you read a healing miracle, now your faith is stirred up and you get ready for your miracle. And that miracle now becomes your miracle. Are you with me? There is a reason why God has recorded those miracles in the Bible so that we will experience the miracle working power of God in our lives. My friend, whatever problem you are going through right now, God is having a solution. There is a miracle in the making. There is a miracle waiting at your doorstep and make it yours. Receive it into your life today. How nice it is when miracles are knocking at your door. There are people that have problems knocking on their door every single day. But God wants the miracles to knock at your door from today. Situations are going to change, my friend. We call them miracles for a reason. Well, a miracle does not require explanation. If you can explain something, then it is not a miracle. It is called a miracle because it has no explanation. How could you explain a miracle sometimes when we post those testimonies and when we share the testimonies, people have questions. Well, how could this be? Because some of the things that God is doing is too good to be true. And it is understandable that people have questions because their reasoning is not, their logic is not able to accept. How could this be true? They are seeking explanation. Well, the human logic seeks explanation, but miracles do not require explanation. Well, that's why it's a miracle. You see, if I throw an object, and if it falls down, now I can explain why it fell down. The gravity acted upon the object, and it was pulled down. There you go. I have explained why it fell down. But if I throw an object in the air on this earth, an object with a good amount of weight and mass. When I put it down and if it's not falling down. Without any other thrust that is pulling it upward. Then. That's a miracle. A 
I can't explain it. The Oxford Reference Dictionary explains, defines miracle like this. A surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural law, scientific laws, and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. I like the explanation. It's a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural and scientific laws. Well, a miracle can never be explained by natural and scientific laws. Science cannot explain the miracle. How can you explain a woman with a dead womb carrying a living baby? There is no explanation. The science and the natural laws are not able to describe how this could have happened. Hence it is a miracle. Miracles, they are beyond nature and science. But what is a miracle? Well, a miracle is something that happens through divine intervention. Because now this is about the natural and scientific laws. This is about this, the laws of nature and science. This can only happen through divine intervention. But how can a divine intervention happen? Well, a divine intervention happens when you believe. All that is required for you to see God intervene in your situation and perform a miracle in your finances or in your physical body or in your situation is you just have to believe. Everybody lift up your hands and say with me, only believe. Hallelujah, friend. You don't have to sit down and use your logic. You don't have to break your head. You don't have to waste your time. You don't have to get depressed. You don't have to spend money. God is telling all that you have to do for a divine intervention is believe. And he's telling only believe. Meaning that's the only thing that is needed. You can't pay God money for him to intervene in your situation. And God is telling you want me to intervene in your situation? Friend, what is the problem that you're facing right now? Is it that financial situation that is bothering you? Or is it that, that sickness that is bothering you? Or is it your relationship problem? Oh, it looks so bad. You don't know how to get out of the mess. You need a miracle for the marriage to be restored. And God is saying, all that you have to do is, everybody, show your finger this way and say, only believe. Put your finger this way and say, only believe because that is the only thing that God is asking of you. Many years ago, when Jesus was walking on this earth, a man, his daughter was dead, Jairus. He was the leader of the synagogue. And the news came that his daughter is dead. And you know what Jesus said? Man, is, his daughter is dead. Jesus said, fear not, only belief. Only Jesus can say something like that in such a situation. Mark chapter 5 and verse 36. Do not be afraid, only belief. Friend, this is the only thing that God is asking of you. Do you understand what it means, only belief? Meaning that's the only thing that God is expecting of you. You got a big tumor on your body and you're like, I want to go to this daughter. I want to go here. I want to do that. This. God is telling. Forget all of those things. That's not required. Only belief. You don't know how to pay off the debt. You're like trying to work the mathematics. And you are trying to do all these calculations. Doing this, that. God is telling. Don't break your get. Don't get depressed. Leave all your calculations aside. All that you have to do is. Only believe. Put it in the comment section. Only believe. Type it one more time. Only believe. And that's the only thing that God is expecting of you. For him to intervene in your situation. And perform a miracle. But you know what my friend. The only thing that people have trouble with is. Believing. They are not able to believe. And the reason is. The logic. The logic is intervening with your faith. The science that you have learned, the maths that you know, the finance that you have learned is telling, well, this is not possible. You want 
to have a miracle baby. You want to believe that God can do it for you. But your logic is telling. The brain is telling. Did not the doctor say your ovaries are not producing eggs? And how do you think that you can conceive anymore? But God wants you to believe that I can do it for you. We have seen God do here in these ministries. We have seen God do some crazy miracles in the lives of the people. It was not medically possible. But God did it supernaturally. Friend, you know why a lot of people are not able to experience miracles in their lives? The only re reason is their logic. They have learned so much of science and medicine. And the medicine textbook is crawling in their mind. Oh, it is not possible. You are sitting down doing all the math, doing all the calculations. And God is looking at you and telling, you want to experience a miracle? You got to set aside your logic. Only believe. Everybody shout with me. Only believe. Put it in the comment section one more time. Only believe. Because if you will believe, your faith connects you with the miraculous power of God. But the moment you begin to reason and use your logic, you're disconnecting yourself from the power of God. What do I mean? Am I saying that God does not want you to use your logic? Am I telling God does not want you to use your brain? Well, God has given you a brain so that you will be wise, you will act wise, you will act with wisdom, you will, you will be knowledgeable. God wants you to be wise. God doesn't want you to be insane, but my friend, what you're expecting is a miracle. Everybody say miracle. And a miracle happens by the intervention of God. It happens by a divine intervention. And this is about the loss of nature. And if you want to see that happen, you have to set aside your logic and allow God perform that miracle by His mighty power that is about the loss of nature. Friend, don't let your reason stand on the way to your miracle. You need a miracle, but maybe your reason, your logic is telling, well, this is not possible naturally. Maybe it is not possible naturally, but it is possible supernaturally. Or maybe your logic is telling, hey, this is not practically possible. Look at your income and look at your debt. Do you think you can pay it off? It is absolutely not possible. There is no practical way that you can pay off the debt. But God is telling, I can do this in a day's time. God has done it in the lives of the people. He has done it in the Bible times and he can do it for you. Ooh. But you have learned so much finance for you to believe that it is possible. You know mathematics and your calculations are telling it is impossible. There is no way that you can get out of this situation. And your logic is telling this is practically not possible. Or it is telling, hey, this is beyond your ability. Or maybe your logic is telling this is not possible scientifically. But I want you to understand that my God is not bound by the laws of nature. He's about science. He's about science. He's about the laws of nature. Maybe your logic, if your logic is telling you it is not naturally possible, maybe it is true that it is not naturally possible. But I want you to understand today. I want to remind you today that my God and our God is about the laws of nature. It is God who established this whole system. He created this whole universe. Am I here to tell you that God is against nature? No. Am I here to tell you that God is against the laws of nature? No. Because it is God who created this universe. It is God who established the laws of nature. So that everything will be wonderful and everything will, will be in order. It is God who created the law of gravity. Yeah. Imagine if there is no, uh, uh, no gravity here. I will be floating. You want to take a sip of water and the water is floating. Everything is going to be a mess. God established gravity so that everything will be in order. But when Jesus wanted to rescue his children who were struggling in the midst of a storm, he looked at gravity and he said, I suspend you for some time. Take leave, rest for a while. And he walked on the water. Shout a hallelujah somebody. Thank you Jesus Christ. 
He's not against the law of gravity. But when he wanted to rescue his children, he was willing to change the rules and he was willing oh, to suspend the laws of nature so that they will experience a miracle. Shout a hallelujah somebody. Friend, God is above nature. He's not bound by nature. What is the miracle that you're looking for? Is it a healing that you're looking for? Maybe you're telling it is naturally. Your logic is telling you it is naturally not possible. But it is supernaturally possible. You know once there was a, a man who lost his iron axe head in the water. It's a real incident, not a story. He was a son of a prophet, prophet Elisha's, you know, trainee. Prophet Elisha was having a prophetic school and the school began to expand and maybe there were 50 and now there were 500. There wasn't enough space to accommodate them. They wanted to expand the place. So they go and they went, they went by River Jordan to fell some trees so that they can build a better place for themselves. And there is this one of the sons of the prophet. He did not have an axe, head of, uh, an axe on his own. So he goes and borrows. He did not make an excuse telling, oh, sorry, sir, please. Can you excuse me? I don't, don't have an axe. No, this man was a serious man. Even if I don't have one, I'm going to borrow something so that I can be a part of this vision. I can be a part of the move of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We don't want to be people that are making excuses. So he goes and borrows an axe. He goes and he's felling a tree, but in the process, the axe had slipped off the handle and it drowned in the water. He was in deep pain. You see, if it is, if it is your own money that you have lost, it's one thing, but if this is a borrowed money that you have invested in the business and the business is drowning, it causes an extra pain. Now this man was in extra pain. He comes and cries to the prophet, Sir, this borrowed axe has drowned. The prophet said, take me to the place. Now he identified the location. And prophet Elijah, he breaks the branch of a tree and he throws it there. And you know what happened? This solid metal iron axe head, it came up and it floated. Have you ever seen metal float? I mean, a solid metal. Maybe you can take a cup of water, put in a ball pin and you will watch it drown, not float. And you're telling to yourself, this is naturally not possible. Hmm. If a solid metal iron axe head can float, friend, what do you think is poss impossible? My God is about nature. It is naturally not possible, but supernaturally possible because here we see a solid iron axe head float. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Throughout the history, we see nature obeying and submitting to the power of God. What do you do when you want to want some extra daylight? Well, when people want some extra daylight, they call it daylight savings. They fiddle with the watch. But you know what Joshua did? He wanted some extra daylight. He did not <laughs> fiddle with the watch. You know what he did? He looked at God and said, God, I want some extra daylight. Can you stop the sun there? And God replied, okay, done. Oh, sounds crazy, right? And the Bible is telling the sun stood still. Joshua 10, 13. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're, huh? the sun can't stand still. Only the earth should have stopped rotating. You are right. But I believe God and his word has to be true. And we now know that the sun is spinning. And it is on an axis. And it is absolutely possible the sun stood still. If, the God, if God's word says so, it is. I believe the sun stood still. And the corresponding the earth stood still. And there was extra daylight. With all of this science and knowledge, and people still call it a sunrise. The sun is not rising and sun is not setting. We know that the earth is spinning around. But still we call it a sunrise and a sunset because that's a way of expression. So when Joshua said, I believe it was a way of expression, but not just that. 
When he said, Lord, stop the sun, God stopped the sun because the Bible is telling the sun stayed in the middle of the sky and it did not set as on a normal day. Hallelujah. Friend, when God wants to do a miracle for you, he's not going to let certain things happen normally. They are going to behave abnormally because God is working something supernatural for you for God is doing some miracle happen in your life. Say an amen. Amen. Your logic is telling it is naturally not possible, but God is telling mm, it is supernaturally possible. Thank you, Jesus. What else is your logic telling it is telling? It is practically not possible. It's not practically possible, but it is possible supernaturally. Maybe you're looking at your debt, you're looking at your income, and you're like, oh, it is practically not possible. God has handled a lot of such practically not possible situations. Once there was a huge famine in a country. Very huge famine. People started eating their own babies. Now you know how terrible the famine was. It was very serious. Two ladies, they looked at each other and said, Hey, Today let let us eat your baby and tomorrow let us cook our baby. Real. This is not a story. And they agreed and the first day they killed one baby and they cooked the baby and ate. And the next day when they wanted to cook the other lady's baby, she was not willing to go. They came to the king asking for some justice. When the king heard the story, he tore his cloth and started crying. Such was the terrible situation of the famine in the land of Samaria. But you know what prophet Elisha, he prophesied, hmm, there is no food for people to eat today. But he's telling, tomorrow by this time, he's fixing a time in 24 hours. Everybody said 24 hours. Hallelujah, friend. By the time your clock is doing one round in a 24 hour circle, God is able to perform a miracle for you. The prophet Elisha said, Tomorrow by this time, two shears of barley will be sold for one shekel. And one shear of fine flour will be sold for one shekel. Right here at the gate of Samaria. And you know what, there was a man probably, I think maybe he was a finance minister or he knew a lot of, you know, how things work. He was an important guy in the country. The man on whom the king leans. Probably a knowledgeable guy, an influential guy, a man of wisdom. He looked at the prophet and he scoffed saying, "Mm -hmm. even if you make windows on the sky do you think this is possible but you know what God did the supernatural and it happened just as the prophet did you know what God did God used four lepers these I'm like lepers they for them to live they had to depend on others Back in those days, the lepers were outcasts. They cannot even come into the city. They were at the gate of the city. Now, when they go into Samaria, they are not going to get food because people are dying there. But there were Syrians who had come and camped against Samaria. They had enough food. They had money, gold, everything, clothes, sandals, everything in surplus. These four guys said, well... We can't go into the city because people are dying. And we are sitting here. No food. We are dying. So why not we go to the Syrians and find some food? And one guy probably, he said, they're going to kill you. And the other guy replied, anyway, you're going to sit and die. Why sit and die? Let's go try and die. Good logic. So all the four, they walk towards the Syrian camp. But you know what? God did the miraculous there. God caused some sound effects. Everybody says sound effects. You know, God, when he wants to do a miracle for you, God has some better VFX. 
Hallelujah. So as they walked, just four lepers walking towards the Syrian army. But you know what? The Syrian army heard huge chariots and horses coming towards them. They were scared, fear struck. They said to themselves, maybe the king of Samaria has gathered some of his friends and they're all coming against us. Actually, nothing happened. Only four lepers were walking. In the name of Jesus, may God cause your enemies to hear the sound of the armies of God coming against them and may God confuse your enemies in Jesus name now this happened to the Syrian army and they said we are going to die they left everything the food the valuables the gold the sandals clothes and they ran they fled for life and by the time the lepers the lepers were innocent they didn't know anything by the time they went we know the whole thing because we read it in the Bible these lepers they didn't know what happened all that they saw was food. Everybody say food. Guys were dying, but now there is enough food. Clothes. They were enjoying it. All of a sudden, one guy rem remembered, Oh, man, people are dying in Samaria. It wouldn't be fair for us to be enjoying this all alone. Let's go and invite those people. And you know what? Just as the prophet prophesied, in 24 hours time where people were cooking their babies, now, two measures of barley were sold for one shekel and one measure of fine flour was sold for one shekel and the famine was gone. All of a sudden in 24 hour time, there was surplus and you are looking at yourself and telling, it is practically not possible. Mm -hmm. Friend, it is practically not possible. That's what the finance minister said as well. But that guy, that guy he, did, he was not alive to experience the surplus that happened because he doubted God. It's practically not possible, but supernaturally possible. Do you know an instance in which Jesus made an ATM, an automatic teller machine out of a fish's mouth? They took the coin and they paid the temple tax. Practically not possible, but supernaturally possible. What else is your logic telling? Maybe your logic is telling this is beyond your ability. Those people that are fighting you are stronger than you. They are wiser than you. They are more influential than you. And your logic is telling, hey, you are not going to win this battle. This is beyond your ability. It is true that it's beyond your ability, but it's not beyond God's ability. Shout an amen, somebody. Once upon a time, real story, there was a very influential man. He wrote a document which the king signed and approved for all of the Jews to be killed and even the date was set. This man was so influential and the Jews did not have a voice. Because this is from a man who is second in command. Whatever he says comes to pass. He has so much of authority in the kingdom. But you know what? It was beyond their ability for the, for the Jews to save themselves. They were not as influential as him. Now the whole community, a whole race, is going to be killed across the kingdom. But you know what? In the turn of events, God changed everything. And this Haman, who wanted to kill all of the Jews, he first wanted to kill Mordecai the Jew. Because he hated him so much, he made a 60 foot gallows right in front of his house, and he wanted to kill him. But overnight, everybody say overnight, God changed everything. But in the very same gallows that Haman made for Mordecai, Haman was hanged and killed. And the date that he fixed for the Jews to be killed, it was a date of celebration for the Jews. And it was celebrated across the kingdom. And your logic is telling, it is beyond your ability to handle this. God wants you to know. Maybe it is beyond your ability. It is not beyond my ability. 
friend, you're not alone. You've got the supernatural forces and the armies of God working for you. What made you say that it is beyond your ability? When the Syrian army came to attack prophet Elisha, the servant was trembling, but Elisha looked at God and said, God, please open his eyes. And by the time the servant's eyes were open, he saw the hills were full of horses and chariots. And you are telling to yourself, it's beyond your ability. It's never beyond your ability because we are never alone. May God open your eyes that you will see the armies of God, the angels of God that are working on your behalf. It is never beyond your ability. Or maybe your logic is telling, hey, this is scientifically impossible. But don't you know that God is about science? For a woman whose womb was dead, God put a living baby inside of it. The Bible is telling, Romans 4, 19, without weakening in faith, in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. Whose body? Abraham's body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Sarah's womb was dead. Abraham's body was dead. But both of them become a dad and mom because God, though it was scientifically impossible, God made it supernaturally possible. Maybe doctors told you there is no medicine. Well, when you come to Jesus, you're not dealing with a doctor. Jesus is a healer. Doctors give medicines that work for you. Jesus, he heals you. Maybe it is beyond the medical science for you to receive a healing. But I want you to understand it is not beyond the reach of God. God can perform a miracle for you. Friend, all that is expected of you is only believe. Everybody say, only believe. Hallelujah. If you will believe, you will see the marvelous, wonderful, mighty and glorious and miraculous works of God in your life. I want to pray for God's miracles over you because God is about to do some miracles for you today and right now. A miracle is about to be released in your life. But before that, it is time for us to sow our seeds. It is time for us to bring the tithes and offerings. And following that, I'm going to pray for miracles and healings. Get ready to receive your own miracle. Father God, we thank you for the word. We love you. Lord, a lot of times we have allowed logic and reason and the signs that we have learned to stand on the way. But Lord, today we believe and all that is required is for us to believe. We believe that you can work a miracle in our finances. You can heal us. You can do. Turn around the situation for us, oh God, as we believe in you. Thank you for your releasing your miracle working power, your mighty power, and you're releasing a miracle for us. In Jesus' name, I pray for every tithe and every offering that is sowed today. Lord, I pray that you would bless them supernaturally. And every seed that your children are sowing today, may it be blessed for them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We will be singing a song right now. And use this time to give to the Lord. And giving is not compulsory. But if you've got your tithes and offerings and building funds ready, utilize the details that you see on the screen. If you want to use Google Pay, Paytm, or if you want to do a bank transfer, use one of those methods and whatever is comfortable for you. And sow a seed and expect a reward from the presence of Jesus Christ. And if it is a building fund, do mention it as building fund. If it is a tithe, do mention it as tithe. And if you are doing a bank transfer, take a screenshot text message or whatsapp or email them to us so that we will be able to acknowledge god bless you don't go anywhere i'll be coming back and i'll be praying for healings and deliverances so stay tuned
Thank you, Jesus Christ. I want to say a big God bless you to each and every one of you that have sowed a seed today. For the tithes, the offerings, and the building funds, every single seed that you have sowed today, your reward is on the way. God is definitely blessing you. Thank you very much for your partnership with our ministries and may the Lord Jesus Christ bless each and every one of you. So are we ready for miracles? If you are ready, shout a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. And God is going to do pr profound miracles. Whatever your sickness is, whatever your problem is, God is about to do a miracle for you today and He's going to do it now. Only believe. Type it in the comment section. Only believe. Leave. Hallelujah. So before I pray for healings and deliverances, I want you to watch this testimony and I want you to be encouraged and may your faith be stirred up and get ready for your own miracle so that you don't have to watch testimonies, but you will share your own testimony. Let's go and watch this testimony. And after that, I'll be praying for healings and miracles. 
my name is Wendy and I'm four weeks old in this church. I came four weeks ago. This is my fifth time in here. I want to thank the Lord for the miracle that he did last week. See, my problem is I have allergies. Since I was a small kid, as long as I can remember, I think three, four, five years. That's when the allergies started. I could not eat fish. Like if people are coming, passing through, they are selling fish. They open the, ba the basket. The smell would automatically affect me the smell will cause only energy. the smell just by That's smelling terrible. fish smelling fish would cause allergy all over the face yes okay yes go ahead then uh when i came here to dubai 2017 the list for allergies added i was lactose intolerant everything that has to do with milk i couldn't eat so the list kept on piling and piling and piling but last week the lord showed his miracle for me last week we came late and uh, i came in behind the row then the pastor was asking if anybody need deliverance i didn't know i was going to come i was not planning on even coming in front but i found myself coming in front the pastor prayed for me well, what's your problem what allergy is it You can't eat pork? You can't eat fish? You can't eat drink milk? You can't eat egg? You can't eat spices? So what do you eat? Only chicken and beef. The name of Jesus. Every spirit of allergy today, I stand under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you, leave this body. In Jesus' name, I command you, get out of the body, you devil. I release the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. From today, she will eat pork, fish, eggs, drink milk and be healthy. I declare it over her in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. I want you to do something. What do you like the most, the pork or the fish? What do you want to taste the first thing? Fish? fish? Yeah. Go ahead. What fish do you want to buy? Mackerel. Mackerel? Yeah. You go buy mackerels wherever you shop from. Eat it and come back next Friday. You are healed. Yesterday night I was coming from my office. In fact, uh, Sister Shalini was supposed to make uh, the fish for me, but unfortunately she was sick. So I decided, no, I can go and buy the fish for myself. I went and bought the mackerel. I made it. I even asked her and sent pictures every single time I was cooking. Is it done? Is it okay? And she said, it's okay. You can pray. You can eat. Then I prayed. Then I went to bed. When I woke up, because usually when the allergies start, 5, 10, 15 minutes, you can actually see the swelling of the face. But yesterday I slept, will. lips will swell, my uh, gums will swell, I will have lacerations, uh, you know when you are burnt with tea or tea, all those lacerations, I can feel them in my mouth. So usually 20 minutes tops, my whole face, my nose, my eyes, everything will swell. So yesterday I went to bed, today morning I woke up, before I could open my eyes, I prayed, Lord this is my time. This is my time. I opened my eyes. Nothing happened. She even checked it. Oh, Amen. You can do the God in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So I remember her. I'm mean, like 30 years. She's been having this allergy. She can't take fish. She can't take lactose. And what else? I remember you telling Eggs, me. pork, eggs, spices, pork, and, and uh, the list goes on. The list and goes on. And like you know, if the I'm mean, like I don't know what was left for her to actually consume. But Jesus has delivered her just one small day and now she's able to eat fish and nothing has happened. The Lord has glorified His name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord somebody. We praise God for what God has done for you, Wendy. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. What a glorious Jesus we serve. And I give all glory and honor and praises to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit for what He has been doing in the lives of the people. And today is your turn for you to receive your miracle. Hallelujah. But before I pray, I want to remind you 
that the Lord Jesus Christ does these miracles so that his name will be glorified. That's number one. So when you receive a miracle, you can't keep it to yourself. There are people. They never felt shy about going to the doctor, showing themselves. They never felt shy when they had the sickness in their body. But the moment it went away, now all of a sudden, their dignity and everything is now on their mind. Friend, if God healed you, he did it for his glory. So go and talk to others about it. That's number one. Number two, send your testimonies to us because we want to know what Jesus Christ has done for you. And not just that, your testimony will become someone else's testimony as well. Hallelujah. So you can see the email and WhatsApp number details on the screen. Get in touch with us or come here in church, to the church in person and share with us what Jesus Christ has done for you. And if possible, you can, if you have a nice video camera on your phone, you can choose a quiet background, a clean background, and you can record those testimonies and you can send them to us. If not, type it in detail and send them to us. You can WhatsApp or email them to us. But when you do that, don't forget to include the following six details. Number one, your name. Number two, a picture of yours. And number three, the name of the condition or the disease or sickness that you had. And number four, how long you had it for? Three months, three years, 13 years, 30 years, how long you had it for? And number five, what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you today and now. Maybe you felt the heat rush through your body or a chill water being poured over you or somebody touch you and that tumor disappeared. Share with us what Jesus Christ did for you. And number six, if you have an x-ray report, scan report or a blood test report, any other medical report or a before and after picture of the tumor being there and the tumor not there now, you can send them to us and we will be looking forward to receiving your testimonies and give glory to Jesus Christ. Are we ready? I want you all to stand up wherever you are. Even if you are in your houses, stand wherever you are. Because now you are being invaded by the power of Jesus. Lift up your right hand towards Jesus and call upon his name. Yebambakuzina, lengarishandra na maburya handa, laktorana shaktobranya. Lagal tal handar basoko idamra sana thodare bayaka in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command every sickness and every infirmity. You devil, you take that infirmity and sickness and cut out of their bodies in Jesus' mighty name. I command you. Now you leave. I speak the healing and the creative miracle working power of Jesus Christ over your body. I'm seeing somebody. And you have this growths in your body, the small, small spots like growth. I don't know, it's kind of a skin problem or something, but they are drying up now in the name of Jesus. That infection is leaving your body right now in Jesus' name. Somebody's watching me, your problem is alcohol addiction. You're not able to get rid of it. But friend, today there is a supernatural power of God that is coming over you. The chain is being broken. God is hearing you. Today, a change of heart and mind is happening. The chain is broken. That addiction is broken. Your life is changing right now. People with eyesight problems. Myopia, long-sightedness, blurry vision, retinal detachment, whatever problem is today, there is a healing that is happening. For I'm seeing the Lord touching some of your eyes right now. Yes, the touch of Jesus. Some of you even can feel it on your eyes. Mark my words. You can even feel it, feel the hands of God touching you. Now, you spirit of blindness, leave their eyes in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Infirmity, leave their eyes in Jesus Christ's mighty name. I speak the healing, miracle working power of Jesus over the eyes. Retina is coming back, it's in position. It's getting attached again. New eyes are being formed. Your eyesight is becoming new and fresh. It's becoming perfect in the name of Jesus. Spirit of deafness, leave. 
Let the hearing become normal in Jesus' name. Bone problems. I'm seeing extra growth going away. Those tumors and cysts and lumps disappear now in the name of Jesus. Check your bodies already. You're being healed. Start doing things you can't do before. Allergies, leave the bodies in Jesus' name. Remado humbasa. You're not able to pay the school fees for your child. You're in tears and in pain. You're like, God, I don't want this problem to affect my, my children's studies and education. God is changing your situation, sister. Hallelujah, la karabaya, Toramana Sundaraya. I'm seeing somebody, I think it's one of your relatives. They are paying off your school's child uh, school fee for your child. Lenda la shikalaba. This is a miracle. God is already speaking in that person's heart. A miracle is happening. I'm even seeing you calling us and letting us know, sending us testimonies. Thank you, Jesus. Yakamo Rahanda Rasalaba Rekaba in the glorious name of Jesus. Bone related problems be healed by the power of Jesus. Everybody with bone related problems, identify yourself. Touch the place where you have the pain. When I say one, two, three, touch, because a miracle is happening for you. Come on. The name of Jesus. One, two, Three, be healed in the name of Jesus right now. Nerve related problems be healed. Diabetes, leave the body in Jesus' name. Every health parameter become normal. New hearts I speak. There are angels of creative miracles that are from the presence of Jesus Christ that are ministering to your bodies right now. New liver, new lungs, new kidneys are being formed by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stroma kreba homba, lentombrini shangrini a holder a holder a holder. Il palteri shotel a marolder a heturbia. You are so insulted. You feel so rejected and embarrassed. You are in tears. The place where you were put to shame, God is bringing honor for you, my friend. Thank you, Spirit of God. Every kind of pain now leave the bodies. Swellings go away in Jesus' name. Skin diseases go away in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now I want you to check your bodies. Go ahead, do that. Check your bodies and do something that you couldn't do before. Check the place where you had the tumor. Check your eyesight. Do something that you couldn't do before. Check those extra growths. They are gone. I want you to send your testimonies to us. As I told you, the Lord Jesus Christ does miracles so that his name will be glorified. So don't keep it to yourself. Let us know what Jesus Christ has done for you right now. You can see the email and WhatsApp on the screen. Either you record it and send it to us or you can write it in detail and send them to us. We are here waiting to hear from you on what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Father, we celebrate you for the miracles that you have done today. I give all glory and honor and praises to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I give all glory and honor and praises to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I give all glory and honor and praise to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May your righteous name and your good name be glorified, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to quickly say a prayer for every one of you that have been sowing into a building fund. We appreciate your valuable partnership. This building fund we are raising for us to have a healing center in Chennai where many people can be healed. Amen. And if you are one of those people that have been blessed through the ministries, I want you to consider being a partner in this vision that God has given us. Amen. So, 
You can partner, become a partner in the vision. How do you become a vision partner? Vision partners are people that support the ministries financially on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis. As the Lord lays in your heart, you can sow. It could be a small seed or a big one. According to your capacity, you can start sowing. This enables us to do what we are doing and even more. We can get onto TV programs. We can do more. We can do more healing crusades and meetings, reaching the lost for the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have a role in it. And it's not compulsory, but if the Lord lays in your heart, I welcome you to join me in this vision so that now this vision is our vision. Hallelujah. So you can go to our website and register yourself for a bit to being a vision partner or simply you just can make it decide in your heart and mind and start sowing already. And right now for already those of you that are partnering in this vision and those of you that have sowed into the building funds, we thank you and I thank Jesus Christ for you first of all and may you be blessed. Let me say a prayer for you. Father God, I pray for all of these precious brothers and sisters that have been so faithfully that diligently, sacrificially generously sowing into the the building fund partnering in this vision I pray that you will bless them let the rewards be released today and now financial breakthroughs healing miracles job related miracles career breakthroughs today let it be theirs in Jesus name I pray to God our Father Amen Amen and Amen Hallelujah and do you know something tomorrow we have a special meeting for financial breakthroughs Wow a lot of times the problem for people is finances but God wants you to be blessed financially. So August 15th, that is Monday, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., we have a special worship and financial breakthrough session. I want you to come in person. If you are looking for financial breakthroughs, come in person because you are going to see God do some exponential miracles for you. Come and experience. I'll be leading worship and also bringing the word and praying for financial miracles. Come and be a part of it and be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. And once again, um, this worship service is happening at our um, Ashokanagar location. The details are on the screen. And by the way, if you're watching us online from Chennai, I want you to know that we worship in three locations in Chennai. 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. 7 a.m. being the Tamil and 9 a.m. the English Tamil on bilingual worship service at YMCA Ashoknaga. This is in Ashoknaga, one minute away from Ashok Pillar and near the Javagar Vidyalaya High Secondary School. And this is where we are worshiping. Come and be a part of this wonderful worship. And we would love to welcome you and your life and your family will never be the same again. Come and grow in the Lord. And 11 a.m. at St. John's Metriculation High Secondary School, Sanitorum Kropet, Chennai. And 6 p.m. at Bethel Prayer Hall, Sholi. And also, if you are in Dubai or in UAE, every Friday I am in Dubai to minister the word because we've got Power Central Church in Dubai. Friday, 7.30 p.m. GST. We worship. The details are on the screen. You can call us up and we'll be able to give you the directions on uh, the details of the location. Come and be blessed and your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Thank you. If you're blessed today, I want you to share this link with someone and bless them. Type in your name and city and leave your comments and let us know how you were blessed today. Father God, I pray for your children in the name of Jesus Christ. All the wicked plans of the devil against me, my wife, our children, our family members, our church members, our online church members, our vision partners. I cancel all demonic plans in Jesus' name. Only the plans of Jesus Christ shall prevail. We thank you for every one of them that has received a miracle today. Let them continue to remain in that miracle. And also God, I pray, according to Psalm 91 and verses 9 and 10, no evil, no plague shall come near our dwelling places. According to Psalm 91 and verses 11 and 12, the angels of God are upholding our feet in their hands. We thank you and we love you. Continue to protect us. Let good news be our portion. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray to God our Father. Amen. May the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the mighty anointing of the mighty Holy Spirit be with all of us now and forever. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.